Testing, testing. And we are live. What are you working on? Uh, <clears throat> one of my viewers, Buddy, just got a job doing game art. <clears throat> okay. Should we close this or no? But it is kind of warm in here. Alright. Wednesday night at 8.30. This is a very late stream. This is going to be like a half day. For sure. Okay. Um. Let's walk back through this. User is prompted to throw Paulino. No other balls are touchable. User grabs Paulino. I like goes away, text changes. User throws Paulino, text goes away. Game waits for Paulino to stop moving. Mr. Luke, holla! What does that say? Ola with two L's. What's up? How are you today? <clears throat> okay, watch balls. This is uh, before Revlo even. You're on the ball today. How's your uh, how's your clean stream going? I have a so I have a temporary roommate. One of my friends is staying here for a week. Should we look up a YouTube clip of a crowd cheering for when he comes back? Like it'll be a sitcom where he enters the room. Crowd cheering sound. I'll just play this whenever he enters the room. Just the game. <laughs> uh, it's just the this screen, this whole screen, and then I also have some money that people donated. My logo, uh, Stoner VR versus Salad Fingers VR. People vote for it. It's pretty even right now. People who have cheered bits. And that's the whole screen. And for some reason the Twitch chat goes away if you shrink the screen too much. Uh, I don't know how to make it come back. It's doing okay, you can check it out if you want. It updates every minute. Nice. Um, is there a specific link to go to, or can I just go to that same site slash my own URL. Let me see. So clean streak clean stream dot Hago Dago. Hope of December, welcome back. How have you been? No, that doesn't work. Yeah, I know it doesn't work because I just tried it. But, um, that's pretty sweet. 
that it uh, it's working. It's always nice when a project starts going smoothly. Okay, so watch balls. Uh, you start out waiting and checking every 0.5 seconds to see if all of the balls that are in play have stopped rolling and if the polyno has stopped. Once they have, you can... Uh, you go through and you also check to make sure all of the balls are in bounds. If <clears throat> any of them are out of bounds, uh, we remove them from play. We turn them off. Uh, we play a little buzzer sound. You have to go to cleanstream.mrluke.de and enter your name. Oh, okay. I'll try that in a second. I'm doing all right. Been doing a bunch of research for this novel. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I was like sick all last week, so I did very little streaming. And then uh, <laughs> basically emergency switched off my stream because I couldn't stop coughing. It was kind of funny. Um, but you're working on a novel. I can't remember. I don't remember if you mentioned that before, but that sounds pretty sweet. Um, okay, so this all looks good. All audio source. Yeah, that's fine. So put ball out of bounds. That's what we're doing already. Change ball color. Okay. This is the part I think we left at. We stopped working on yesterday. Um, we were going to change the ball's color. But this should not be very often. This isn't. This could be. Eh, if this happens more than one time on a frame, then something has gone terribly wrong with the physics. So we're gonna say we'll we'll grab the mesh renderer and grab the material from that to change the color. I don't know what we want to change it to though. Um, here, let's just, ball dot game object dot get component <coughs> mesh render uh, material, and there's only one material on this, so it should be fine dot color equals Mr. Luke already on the gambling spree. Hope of, De Hope of December. H-O-D. Uh, what's your novel about? Okay, let's uh, let's declare a couple of colors here. Player ball color, public. Opponent's ball color. Larry's back. Oh, I got it. But if you didn't, we'll hear it buzzing in a couple of seconds again. Public color, um, let's call it out of bounds ball color. Hey, 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 ah, oh, shit, where did I put it? Larry, everyone! Hello. Oh, shit. Not quite the sitcom cheering that I was looking for, but no, that works. you get the point. Yeah. Oh shit. 
H.O.D. says, an 18-year-old girl became the legal guardian of her 5-year-old brother just a few months prior. She works two full-time jobs and is barely getting by. One day she gets an opportunity to audition him for a reality competition and went up to $100,000. She finds out too late that the casting director slash producer is her ex-girlfriend's father. This causes unexpected situations and forces her to make difficult decisions. Sounds intense. Sounds intense. How far along are you? Okay, let's decide what color is the out-of-bound ball color is, player color, and opponent ball color. <clears throat> uh, did I have to save? What's going on? Got some errors here. Oh, okay. No, we didn't. I don't think we need to cache this because... It's not going to be like an every time thing, it's going to be like a rarely something weird happens with the physics, or if you throw a ball out of bounds somehow, because you're that bad, uh, then this will happen one time. <clears throat> so it's not going to spam, so it's fine. So we'll say... Uh, opponent, ball color? Okay. Still in the outlining phase currently? Nice. I feel like uh, outlining is very important, and you should spend a lot of time doing that. Like, I should have spent more time outlining this script before I wrote it entirely, and then basically stopped and then redid it. Okay. Uh, feel free to vote in chat if you don't like these colors. The player's ball color is going to be blue, and the opponent's ball color is going to be green. And then when it goes out of bounds, it's going to turn red. Like bright red, like unnaturally red. Very few people are pantsers and can write something great without outlining a time first. By that, you mean people who just, like, dive in with an idea and just, like, start writing from beginning to end? Yeah, that's like a... That's not a real thing that happens in the real world. <clears throat> Do you think J.K. Rowling didn't outline Harry Potter? Literally the only book I've ever read. Just kidding. You're in Twilight. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone is not near you. Okay, so we got some blue balls, green balls, and red balls. All the balls. So, we probably want to make a set of opponent's balls also. So wherever we have balls in play and... Where is it? By the way, uh, anybody who's wondering who is on the screen right now, this is my sister, Courtney. I feel like this should be grouped up a little nice, more nicely. Another guest on the show today. On the show. <laughs> oh my god. Plotters versus pansters mentality. I've never heard of that before. Most serious creators are plotters. I mean, if you're just doing it for fun, the pansters thing is probably fun for a short while until you hit the first brick wall. But... Outlining and planning everything out ahead of time ensures that you can keep the project going longer than longer than one week. <clears throat> player balls, Capra Pride. Yes, player balls. This is a game where you can play with all of the balls. You can play with your own balls or the opponent's balls. 
But I still have to write some code so you can't play with your opponent's balls. Got to turn off the grabability, if you want to call it that. <clears throat> yeah, my friend says she hates outlining because it makes her lose interest faster, but I think outlining makes me more excited for the project. I mean, that's just like a that's just like a short term goal kind of thing. If you can't stay excited past the outlining process, then it's probably not that great of a project anyway. That's me talking out of my ass, by the way. I don't know anything about writing novels, so... Oh, okay, so we have to also make sure that we turn this back to the right ball color. Um, <clears throat> ball, this ball is going to be in... I guess we want to do a check to identify if it's the player's ball or... Yeah, I'll just do that real quick. If, what is it? Balls in play, okay, so <clears throat> if opponent balls dot index, yeah. Oh, because it's an array. How are you, by the way, Haxel96? What's going on? I've seen you in here before, I'm pretty sure. How have you been? Okay, so this is an array, not a list, so we want to... We wish it had a contains function, but it doesn't. It doesn't have an index of function. Do I just have to do a for each? No, there's some other way to do it. <coughs> System.array index up. Okay. That's it. And I don't think this has even been tested, honestly. Some of this code, so... This is what I did yesterday. Um, so if it doesn't work, then there's a couple places in the code where we have to change it. Doing pretty good. It's 3 a.m. here, though, so really tired. Oh my god. 3 a.m. So you're... What are you in Germany? PK Biggums, howdy ho. What is up? How have you been, dude? How's that, uh, how's that Psychonauts? Yeah, I was here when Hardly Difficult rated you. Ah, that's what I thought. Sweden! Nice. That's pretty awesome. Such a diverse chat right now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> checking that this is... Okay, so if it's not equal to negative 1, then it exists in there, and we want to say that means that it's the opponent's ball, so we want to change it to the opponent's ball color. Else, we want to change it to our own ball's color. And that's pretty easy. I feel like that's not confusing to re reread. You've been good, haven't played Psychonauts yet? Yeah, I feel like I have a list of like a hundred games on my playlist before any new games, and I never get through that list. It just keeps growing. Like a little indie point and click adventure called Dropsy. Um, I think I've seen that advertised. 
I haven't seen like a trailer or screenshots though, so I don't know anything about it. <clears throat> Point and clicks are usually can usually be pretty good though. Okay, so we have this. Um, We don't really care about changing the Polino's color, but we do want to make that sound. Okay, so we're going to copy this part about the sound happening. We're not going to change the color though, because if the Polino goes out of bounds, it's just going to. Or do we want to make a buzzing sound if the Polino is out? I don't think we do. I think we just want to put it back. So, <clears throat> if it's the first throw and you're just throwing the Polino, uh, what we do is we give it back to the player, basically. Um, It's a really weird game, there's not a single letter of English or any other language in it. I guess that makes localization pretty easy. <clears throat> or non-existent. Reset Polino position. So how do we do that? Well, before each throw, we want to save the position. So that's just going to be a vector 3. <clears throat> We'll just make it a really explicit name, like Polino Last Position, since there's a lot of variables in this script about the Polino. We just want to be explicit. <clears throat> I'm going to look up Dropsy real quick. I want to at least get a visual for it. Looks pretty weird. Here, I'll drag it on screen in case you guys want to see. <laughs> okay, that's not dropsy. But this looks like a pretty weird game. You have a feeling Plunker is going to end up a lot longer than you originally expected. Uh, <laughs> so originally Plunker was just a mini game, <clears throat> and then when I finished the first version of it, uh, my brother suggested, what if it's not marbles and sticks? What if it's like bombs that are dropping through, and what if it's on an airplane and you have to stop the airplane from blowing up, and then I think it got a little out of control. I think I went a little too deep. Probably could have finished like a small game at this point a while ago, but instead I decided to go with <clears throat> all of these parts of game development that I don't know much about, like uh, storyline kind of stuff. Which is fun, and like it's really cool to see it come together, but it's not very fast to make, which was my original plan was to do make something fast. Make a couple games really fast, but yeah, whatever. <clears throat> okay, so we have Polino last position. Uh, when do we want to save this? Probably we want to save this every time. <clears throat> every time we have watch balls, and uh, <clears throat> the Polino successfully comes to a stop. So. Uh, if Polino is out of bounds. So, we don't want this to actually be in an else. <coughs> we... Well, yeah, we do. So we want polino.transform.polino. 
position <clears throat> to be set to that. More content is more content. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> I wish I could have had like a, a small project and then a large project rather than just taking my small project and turning it into a larger project. But I don't know. I <clears throat> So I still have plenty of time to finish it. And I think I'm getting better at uh, focusing on specific tasks. I don't know. It'll come out eventually. It will. I promise. <clears throat> like, I spend a lot of time experimenting with things. Um, for instance, I, I was reading up on the physics, how the mesh colliders are so inefficient. It seems like everyone just wants to talk about how inefficient mesh colliders are, especially if you don't make them convex. So, I, I want to have, like, a little basket here for the balls to rest in. And it's like... Well, you can't really do that without, without a, <clears throat> I don't know, some mesh collider, or you could have a couple like cubes or whatever. But that would be, I feel like having four, five, six cube colliders here would be less efficient than having a super simplified mesh collider. So I was like testing it out and just kind of simplified this, uh, this into. A very simple thing. Um, even this wall here, I've just made one triangle because it's. Um, I was reading up that it was based on how many triangles are in the mesh collider, make it uh, more and more inefficient. And I just wanted to test that out and see. I don't know. I haven't actually written any tests, or given any feedback or anything yet. But like I, I waste time doing stuff like that. And it's probably helpful in the end, but. You don't calculate those things when you're planning the whole game. <clears throat> okay, so the Paulino position is never going to be... Yeah, we're never going to set it to a blank value. Because if it's set, if it's the first one thrown, then we're not going to get into this. So it always has to be set once, which is fine. Just trying to ensure that we don't get like an error message of having an unassigned variable. <clears throat> so long as you don't have tons of mesh colliders everywhere, you should be a-okay. -OK. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, but then I, I was realizing I do have some mesh colliders in the airplane scene, <clears throat> like in the cockpit where I could probably have, like, simplify them a little more and stuff. <clears throat> okay. I need a cough drop and some water. I'll be right back. done being sick. Oh, hello lady in the background. <laughs> they could see you when I rested up. I know. <laughs> uh, EK says, in all caps, oh, hello lady in the background. How long were you there? And Haxel says, LMAO. This is Courtney, my sister. Yeah, but these people weren't here before. Oh. Mm. Oh. Am I in front of the camera still? Okay, never mind. <laughs> well, that was just a whole long thing. Um. <laughs> anyway, oh, these cough drops are so gross. They have like. Cough syrup goo inside of them when you break them open. It's the worst tasting stuff ever. Okay, so we want to say Poldino dot 
transform dot position, so we're swapping it around here, equals okay. Mm. And also when we do that and set it somewhere, we also have to make sure that its velocity is set to zero so that it doesn't start moving around. Mm. Do we want to cache the Paulino's rigid body or I don't think so. I don't think it's worth it. Do we have any do we have any QA for the guest? Courtney or Larry? I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm JK. I'm JK, guys. I'm asking them if they have any Q&A for your, my guests. Oh. Well, I'm hiding the course, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Paulino.kit component rigid body. Okay. What do we want with the rigid body? We want the velocity, and we want it to equal zero. Vector 3.0. <clears throat> Uh, how are your projects coming, PK? I don't know uh, how familiar you are, you are with Bubby slash Crisp, but apparently he just got a job uh, doing some 3D stuff. So that's pretty sweet. We don't talk about those jobs. Yeah, fuck jobs. Well, you know, last position. <clears throat> so do I have to set the angular velocity to zero also, or will setting its velocity to zero be enough? I imagine like setting it on the ground with zero velocity, uh, would it roll away? Where it can keep its angular uh, velocity and just like start rolling when it sits on the ground. Oh, we don't talk about your projects. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. <laughs> um, you were doing that localized gravity thing in uh, VR, right? A while, a long time ago. Did you ever? I mean, we don't have to talk about it if you don't want to, but. Pretty sure it would roll. Alright. God damn it. I mean, I think I think I knew that, I just didn't wanna believe it. Well, here let's uh, let's put it in. <clears throat> um and then let's comment it out. And when it does roll away, I'll just put it in there. Because it makes a lot of sense that it would roll away, but... Just kind of joking about your projects, you're lazy as hell about them. Yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. Oh shit, the gravity stuff turned out to ho hawking gun for game jam for a game jam. You never flush flushed it out. Nice. Do you have a playable copy? I'd like to give it a test drive if you if you have one. But no worries if you don't. Okay, so we reset the Paulino if it goes out of bounds. See, I think this is my problem. I'm writing code, I'm writing extra code right now for in case any of the bars balls go out of bounds. But, like, <clears throat> I don't know. 
I could just as easily have made the ground outside of this. Um, have the same tag as the back wall, I guess. Because you're not going to hit a ball. It, there's not going to be a time where you hit a ball that's sitting flat on the ground and it bounces out of here. I don't think, maybe. Oh shit, you have a link to it. Nice. This was months ago, can't believe I didn't mention it. Um, yeah, you were talking about it before you did the game jam, but then I don't feel like I heard anything after the game jam. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide this right into the bookmarks and take a peek. Whoops. <laughs> Nice. Fight your way through a randomly generated dungeon full of strange stone beings armed with three antimatter grenades and your trusty black hole powered pistol. Warning, this game uses artificial locomotion. Do not play if you're prone to motion sickness. So do you move with the trackpad like a D-pad? There's no teleporting, so it might make you sick. Ah, I see. Oh my god, I'm getting an ad on my own stream. <coughs> uh, I think, so I feel like I've played enough VR that when I play uh, games with artificial locomotion, I don't, I don't really get sick. Like when I first played it, I would get sick if I tried that. But um, now it just kind of feels bad. Like, I don't feel like I'm going to puke, but it's not like, it doesn't make for a fun feeling. Not to say that the game can't be good, but, you know. <laughs> it definitely takes away from the experience, I feel like. I played another game um, where they had locomotion based on swinging your arms. Like, swinging your arms as if you're, like, walking or something. And it felt okay, but it was still bad. Okay, so you just hold the grip buttons and point where you want to go. All right, like as long as you're like not pointing terribly away from the direction you're looking, it should be fine. Okay, so so we got that set up. <coughs> okay, so this is the part of the code where we're like, okay. We've checked that all the balls have stopped, and then we've checked that all of the balls are in play, or we've put, gotten rid of the balls that are out of bounds. <laughs> and uh, now we want to say it's time to throw the next ball, and whose turn is it? So, first of all, um, we can say if is Paulino. That just means um, you are throwing the Paulino, so it's the first ball, so... PK Bigums, be right back. Alright. If is Paulino, we want to say the same player. Uh, basically, we don't have to evaluate the field. We can just say the same player gets to play again. So, maybe we should just call next ball, which currently is only has one line of code in it, so we're going to have to write the next part in there. Um, if is Paulino next ball. <coughs> Gonna head to bed now, see you another day. Alright, Haxel. Thanks for staying up so late and hanging out. I'll see you another day. Don't forget to enter the raffle for uh, games. That's up again, so if you're interested in snagging some Steam codes, feel free to 
type ticket one. Damn, I got all them begging strips. How do you only have 49? Oh, you have 69 now. Okay, should I gamble them all? 4702. It's all or nothing, baby. Ah! I am the leader now. I have 9,400 now. <laughs> what? I gambled my own imaginary points. And I gambled all of them in one double. Oh. I ordered like an arm to hold the microphone since it's always so far from my face, so it always sounds so shitty. So that I can put it closer to my face and it will sound better now. <laughs> Fine, Kappa. <laughs> Stoner Couch. Stoner Couch back for 69 points. Okay. If it's Paulino, next ball. If it's not, we're going to have to evaluate the court. Because you just threw a regular ball. <laughs> and we want to see who has the closer ball to see who goes next. Else. Uh, what did we call that? Eval field. Field, really? It's, a, it's more of a court. Let's find references of this and decide if we want to change the name. Yes, we do. We haven't referenced it yet. Eval court. Not to be confused with Evil Court, which is sitting behind me. Okay, this is coming together. Oh, we got a lot of people back in Stoner Couch. Are you still going to use Steam Greenlight, or is that just there to confuse you? It's just there to confuse you. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not sure yet. Um, I definitely have not actually read that whole thing about Steam VR developers, but I need to look at it. I just keep forgetting when I'm not online. I have seen a couple other guys, um, posting VR games to Steam Greenlight, though. So... Apparently some people are doing it, maybe they don't know that they don't have to, or I'm not sure yet. But <laughs> I don't have any other goal <laughs> to post yet. I'll think of something. I'll think of some reason for people to send me money for no reason. You should absolutely make a few screenshots and a short gameplay clip and email it in. You think I could... Uh, you think I could get uh, their attention with what I have right now? I mean, I have a decent amount, I guess. You don't have to. Gavin pretty much greenlights any VR game posted there. Ooh. Gavin himself. He just has an app where he flips through all of the posts while he's taking a dump in the Valve offices. He just right swipes everyone. Okay. Eval court. We've written that already, but next ball needs to be written. Okay. So eval court returns a bool, but I don't think we want it to return anything, honestly. I think what we want is to set whose turn it is. And then call uh, next ball. If it's applicable. So we'll just change that real quick. Um, I actually have a 
recorded playthrough of the for whole first scene on YouTube, but I didn't really like how it turned out. I don't know, I felt like, uh, so I was trying, when I was doing the playthrough, I was trying to look around everywhere just to, like, get everything on screen, and I, it ended up just being kind of, like, I don't know, a nauseous kind of thing, because you just see, like, the screen, like, just dart around everywhere. More than likely, they'll give you a dev account. Sweet. I'll have to do that first thing tomorrow, or even maybe tonight when my stream ends. Oh, I actually started recording uh, one time. I think I played an entire thing through, like, fit, like 10 minutes maybe, maybe even more. And then I realized that I didn't have the actual game open full screen. I had it basically set like this, and I was like, oh my god. But yeah, now that I have a second, like a visibly second scene, I'm going to move this uh, mini game onto the island when I get a chance. But um, once you see that there's an island with bocce ball and an airplane, um, Switching back and forth between different clips of different mini games will be really cool. It'll make the game look long, longer than five minutes. Okay, so how do we know which player's turn it is? Bull player's turn. Okay, <laughs> when it's true, it's the player's turn. Let's see if we've referenced this anywhere. A couple places. PK, you got all the tips. You got all the insights. <clears throat> I saw there was a pretty big game jam in Pittsburgh coming up. Uh, like at the end of next month. First prize, $1,000. I didn't even realize there were, like, prizes for most game jams. It was like a three-day or four-day game jam. That would be really fun to enter. Uh, and if you show up and if you don't have anyone to work with, they, they have, like, a whole thing where they set you up with a team. They, like, pair people together, like artists and programmers. Just simply obsessed over the Steam VR developer page the months leading up to me getting a vibe. <laughs> nice. You did it so that I don't have to. Okay. Player's turn, player's turn, and. Okay, so... <clears throat> Eval court. Okay, this is the weird case of what happens if Both, oh, both players are out of balls. Why should this never happen? <clears throat> I can clearly see that it says that this should never happen, but I don't remember why.
I see people playing the new Friday the 13th game. I'm going to go check that out later. All right. See you, dude. Thanks for stopping in. I'll see you around. <clears throat> So I guess we plan on only calling this when So we find out what the closest ball is, and we say... <coughs> Closest ball is the opponent's, therefore it is the player's turn. So this is most le most often going to happen. <coughs> And then sometimes one of these will happen. Okay. <clears throat> and then at the bottom of this, we probably just want to say next ball. And that should be good. Or... That should be fine. Eval court, next ball. Okay. <coughs> so in next ball, we're going to decrement opponent ball count and player ball count. If the uh, player's turn. else other stuff if it's the player's turn then we want to remove the player ball count so <coughs> player ball count minus minus
I'm thinking that we want... This would be a cool mini game to be able to make it two-player. Uh, this is one of the ideas I had where the screen would actually be fixed and uh, one player could hold each controller and it would essentially be like Wii Bowling. <clears throat> you could use the controllers just as individual like Wii <clears throat> Wiimotes and play bocce ball with them without even using the Vive headset, which is kind of funny to think about buying this expensive headset and not actually using it for VR. But there are a lot of times where you have friends over and you, you're you like, I don't know, you don't want everybody playing with your VR headset because you're drinking or something, uh, and you want to play some multiplayer games. You don't just want to take turns. That would be a cool instance of where you could play a two-player game. It's like a PC Wii. Not a bad idea. <clears throat> Okay. Opponent ball count. Minus, minus. Okay, we're almost to the part where we're going to play test a game of bocce ball, but we're also to that point where we test our code and everything breaks. Okay. <clears throat> active balls. I think I, I think I meant to call this activate balls. I don't think it's referenced anywhere else. Okay, we don't want to call marker set, we want to call... Okay, we're getting rid of this whole thing. So that... I'm just going to comment it out for now. But essentially it's going away. <clears throat> if we want, we can put a bunch of debug logs in while we... while we test the first time through to make the first one through easier. Debug. One ball. Crap. Just <clears throat> put in the names of each function. I don't know if activate balls needs to be its own thing, actually. If it's only called in one place, it's kind of excessive to be its own, <coughs> its own thing. We're just going to copy this, comment this out. Instead, we're going to just Insert this in. Destroy all the ignore hoverings to allow the player to grab the ball again. There are so many little things you have to think about when you're thinking about VR just because the player can, can add so much extra um, human input than a normal game. Usually you can just mess with the keyboard and mess with the mouse. But in VR, they can just touch everything with their hands and push things in the wrong direction. And you don't want to stop them from doing that because then the game doesn't feel natural. 
But you have to account for the fact that they can probably find a way to push one of the balls off the stand. <clears throat> Here, I'll make a note of that, because that's probably something we should count for. Ah. I don't even know if it's an edge case, honestly. I think it could be pretty common. Okay. Next ball, blah, blah, blah. Make a little comment up here. And then we'll reread through the flowchart to make sure that we hit all the main points. Okay. So. Let's see. If is Paulino, next ball. Elf's eval court. So no matter what, it seems like we're just going to eval court. So that part of the piece of code that says this section should never happen actually should happen. And <clears throat> at that point, instead of calling the next ball, we should return. Yes, this should happen. Okay, so what do we want to call it? Here, okay, I'm going to look up some bocce ball terminology just so that I don't even want to Google search if there's bocce ball video games because somebody has already probably done this and I don't even know. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ, I spelled Polino wrong all over this game. It's spelled with an A? Oh no. Well, we're gonna have to rename it just in case people see this code somewhere. It's called a Jack, a Bacino, or a Polino. Depending on local custom. We'll just call it rounds. End round. Or should we just call it eval round? Evaluate round. And then return so that it doesn't call that other one. I believe that works, right? Yeah. Probably gonna steal some of the code that we wrote for this and put it in the same one. Oops. Okay. At this point, we've written enough that we could. Eval round isn't going to happen until the end, so that's going to be a slightly more complex thing. 
So we can le we can test a little bit, make sure everything's set up properly, and then do that. So all we have to do is. Okay, watch balls. Find references. Nothing calls it yet. But we want to call it by anything that is thrown. The Paulino or the Bocce balls. So, Bocce check and play. Bocce, let go. Okay, so we call a throne. <clears throat> so I don't think we want to call a throne. I think we want to call. Well, we can we can call it whatever we want. Watch balls or throne. Throne doesn't really do a whole lot. So we're just gonna. Comment it out here, like some of the other stuff. Yet again, it, it's something that could have been written better had we outlined more. Watch balls. Okay, so we're just going to call watch balls. So we want to add this one line in that was in Throne. It was really the only thing. Probably on the canvas we want to add a score. We can figure that out. Alright, now we want to go back to Bocce Let Go and we want to say instead of Throne we want to call Watch Balls. Is it not public? Oh shit. Ah, God damn it. It's an I enumerator. So there shouldn't be an instance where you can throw the ball multiple times. Damn it. Back it up. We are going to use throne. From throne, we are going to call that I enumerator. Start coroutine. <clears throat> you know, I haven't seen in a long time on Twitch, Chris. I don't know what happened to him, but he used to pop in on a weekly basis and check on the game. Watch balls. Is there anything else with watch balls, or is it just just watch balls?
And then at watch at the end of watch balls we'll probably want to say that it equals null. Now, what am I forgetting other than this? Probably removing and adding balls to balls of play. Let's just double check that we're doing that. Okay, so I think we need to add the ball to balls in play when we throw it. I guess on one ball grabbed is where we want to do it. <coughs> we want to... Good. Let's look at where this is referenced. One ball grabbed. This top game object. I actually want. Touch to hand. I think we want to say else here. And we want to say. This is all good. Don't want to disable that. Watch your master. Dot instance one more grab. Yeah, I don't think we want to do strip anymore. Um, yeah, there's really no reason to destroy this. <coughs> so 
I'm just gonna keep this on. Okay. Oh. Start the game object. Start get component. Bachi check and play. That is going to happen very infrequently. So that's okay. F. FX. How's it going? How have you been? I am just trying to pump out this bocce ball thing. Okay. Now it might be the only thing I think I'm not 100% sure about is going to be, well, all this, uh, is going to work differently than it did before. I think we can... Okay, let's not delete it. Let's just minimize it. Out of play. This enabled false. See, we don't want to do that kind of stuff, I don't think. I don't want to... Disable it. Okay, but we do have some stuff that I think we want to copy from our other script. About the buzzer sound. Good, buddy. Recovering from doing a bunch of programming homework. Well, I streamed it on here and a bunch of people helped. Couldn't have finished without them. Wow, that's pretty sweet. I'll have to uh, check that out next time. What, uh, how deep are you into school? Also... Let me see if I can remember. This is a uh, <clears throat> at my last job, my boss and my coworkers and I uh, went to this site called Code Wars, where we used to basically you join and you can like join all the same clan as your friends, and you just accomplish. You do like coding tasks to earn points and compete against your friends to see who can do more coding problems. It's kind of cool if you're trying to, if you haven't like worked with a language for a while and you're trying to like remember the syntax. It's really good practice for that. But other than that, I think we just spent a lot of time uh, writing code that was not relevant to our jobs. Like, it was probably not helpful for getting stuff done. But yeah, there's a bunch of different languages. They have C-sharp and JavaScript, and a lot of the tasks are uh, universal. Like, they have solutions for each language, which is pretty cool. I think I mostly did C sharp. One ball grabbed. Okay, so we want to find the part where we were changing the ball's color. Okay, yeah. C sharp is what you're learning right now. That's the language to do if you want to use if you want to uh, use Unity or Unreal Engine at any points. 
Let's see. Bocce check in play. So right here, we already do all of these things. Actually, if you notice, we don't set... We don't set anything to zero. We don't set any velocities to zero. What we do... A decent amount. We could make this, we could easily make this a function. <clears throat> um, you like Unity? Yeah. Unity is uh, more programmer centric. That's why I like it. Not too many messy GUIs. Like I've just seen the the thing they use in Unreal Engine for like GUI based work, and it just gets like incredibly messy looking, like the webs of lines being drawn between modules. <clears throat> okay, so this is just for the Polino, um, but we definitely need to set. We just we need to do this for the other one, and I guess. I guess the whole point of what I was going to do before is that when we start the next round, we replace the balls in the little canister thing here. <laughs> so we can do that. Actually, yeah, so we don't need to change the velocity because we're not immediately using it again like we are with the Polino. We're just kind of freezing them, so this set active off works just fine. Um, so I think I could just make this in itself a small function, a public function, so that uh, they can go out of bounds either way. Unless we just want to keep it as an in play ball and also add a set, an extra function, Baki, Baki check in play could have out of play set and it could be set active off. So out of play equals true. It gets. <laughs> Let's see. All right, I'll be right back.
I was just felt like, should I eat something? I don't remember eating dinner, but then... Oh shit, the fuzz! Yeah, the police drive past here quite often, but I think they're actually not chasing anybody in the area. I think they're headed quickly to East Cleveland. The ghetto! What was I doing? Oh, yeah. Out of place. So, I think we decided this is going to be a public variable. And instead of actually setting it out of play, we're going to use it as kind of a little note to the master bocce script. Uh, do we use current throw? We don't use it anywhere. We do use a threshold for sound, max impulse. Now we're using out of play. Um, hmm. uh, do we want it? Okay. You live next to a main road. Sirens are just background noise now. Um, in August, I'm moving to a place that's pretty much literally right on a train track. Like, the front windows face directly to the train track. So, I can only imagine there's going to be a lot of train noises at that point. I'm going to buy a train whistle and a conductor's hat and use them every time a train goes by. Just to make light of my frustrations. <clears throat> okay, so here's my problem. In... Um... In the real world, there are there's bocce ball, and there are referees, and they stand in the center of the court on the side, and they watch the game, and when a ball hits the back wall, they'll pick it up, they'll go snatch it so that it doesn't interfere with any of the other balls in the game, um, because it's technically out of bounds because it hit the back wall during the first throw. Um, and they usually do that as quickly as they have a chance to. If they're near that end, they'll grab it before it even stops rolling. Uh, but if they're not near there, I don't know. It just seems kind of not a hard, any sort of hard rule. But since this is a video game, I can immediately, as soon as the ball touches the back wall, before it even renders the image of it touching the back wall, I can turn it off so that it has no chance of interfering with anything once it's out of bounds. Uh, and I think, actually, as I've said this out loud just now, I've decided that I want to do that. I feel like that improves the game. Of bocce ball. It's kind of like how uh, Hearthstone has a lot of digital-only pieces to it. And those are what make it unique from other card games that were not digital. Games we played. Ago, Kappa Wave. What's up, dude? Chat. Craigasm Wave. I'm learning them. I'm learning the emotes, guys. How are you, dude? Have you entered the raffle this week? I think I just put it up yesterday. It was a little late this week for pretty much everything. FX is chat. Okay, so we're going to say let's do this, but also let's um, make a buzzer noise. Okay. We already did that, actually. <laughs> Ah, okay, so you have that, Jim. And I don't think we're going to change the color of the ball since we're immediately turning it off. Is 
Today was an unproductive day. Craig hasn't been on. Fucking Craig. God damn it, Craig. Actually, that was a joke, but... That's the problem with the long-distance um, collaborations. I feel like, in general, creative types kind of run on their own schedule and have good days and bad days, production-wise. So working with people that aren't used to working with other people on projects like that can get kind of... I don't know, not fun. I think I told you about the um, the project that I was working on like a year and a half ago with three other guys that I only kind of knew. Some days I was like, oh, this is going to be cool. We'll talk about what we're going to do. But most of the time I was just like, oh, God, it's time for this Skype call. Oh, I don't want to even talk about this project. It's so bad. It's not even something I want to do. Okay, Paulino with the row marker. Else. Um, I guess just turn this off. Let's just double check this. Supposedly we have a modeler now, yet he's not invited yet. <laughs> Damn it, Craig Kappa. Huh, cool, so you guys got a three person team rolling now. Okay. Play one shot. We got the buzzer noise down. We want to do balls in play, remove the ball. Okay, so how about we take just this section, copy, Oh yeah, making music is hard though. Yeah, I realized that actually on my last project I tried to make my own music and didn't uh, didn't turn out as well as I thought it would. It's not as easy as you would think. You'd think you could just make some really shitty music, but you can't even make really shitty music. You just make noises that sound terrible. Okay, so Um, bachi, check in, play, ball. So that works out. Do we want to put anything else in it? Uh, I'm struggling with this right now, this thought of... Do I want it to... Turn a color, and then keep rolling for five seconds. Point five seconds. I think I do. 
We're not going to turn it off immediately, but 0.5 seconds in, we will. We're going it. Okay, and this is going to be public. Not sure that we want it to be public necessarily, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything. <laughs> so we don't want to call this on the Polino. So watch and check and play. Okay, so here is where we'll call bocce master dot instance dot remove ball. And then we just have to pass in this. What are you using to make music games? Throw maca. Okay, so we actually don't need out of play. And as far as I can tell, we don't need current kind of throw. Wait, yes we do. Wait a second. So the current throw has to be set to false. Okay, so this is important. Because it can't go out of play after the first one. Are those your bocce balls? Yeah. Why are they all the same color? Because this is the error color. Once you press play, it turns these ones blue and these ones green. And this is... This is the guy that you played. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's the rough draft. Uh, okay, so where does do we check if it hits the wall, the back wall? Okay. Okay. If it hits bocce out of bounds. Okay. We don't wanna do that. We wanna say if it's the first throw. Or if this one is the one that was just currently thrown. Otherwise, we don't want to do anything. So, bocce let go. We want to make sure bocce checking in play. Okay, one ball grabbed. We go to bocce master. This one. We're going to say ball dot current throw equals true, because you're about to throw it. We don't want it that to be turned off until... Um. Eval court or oh watch balls. Okay. So the point where you're going through all balls in play. These are all of the all of the balls in play. Okay. Current throw. Ball dot current throw. Equals false at this point because it's no longer being thrown. They've all stopped. And also in remove ball, we also want this to be set. Or I guess if current throw, okay. So we want to put it in out of play. Make sure that that's definitely turned off. Making music is easy, making good music is hard. <laughs> Fair enough, FX. Fair enough. Sound advice. Uh, okay. Body of a move ball cannot be an iterator. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Okay. Oh, okay. 
That makes it really annoying. Oh, yeah, that's pretty annoying. <sighs> I wish there was a set timeout function here for us to just use just this one time. I don't think I want this to be um, a coroutine just for that one wait per seconds call. I'm just gonna Google search set timeout C sharp. What if there's something I've been missing out this whole time? Seems kind of overkill for what we want to do. Sorry, I was just checking out some stuff. So you're making a bunch of methods, right? Right now? <clears throat> um, not really. Uh, I've pretty much finished all the methods that I was working on. I'm just... Uh, I I moved this out of a coroutine into this, and then I just noticed that it has a yield. So I'm wondering if I want to make this an I enumerator. It's only referenced twice, so we could just call the coroutine. Okay, we'll just do that. Public I enumerator. I usually don't like doing that, and there's probably a better solution, but it's just not coming to mind right now. And then, uh, <clears throat> wherever these references are, we can just start code routine. It's not going to hurt anything because, yeah, it'll be fine. Um, and then also it's called here. I always forget Do you need to start the coroutine here. I think that's fine. If it's not, we'll uh, find out soon enough. Okay, let's make sure everything's saved. Bot you check in place. So, but that's what we we're going through, making sure everything's here. I think. I think that's everything we need. Your next homework is a refactor, is to refactor a program I wrote earlier to use a bunch of methods instead of whatever the garbage is I wrote. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, um, depending on the language, you can call them functions or methods. 
They're, it's usually just pretty interchangeable. I don't know why I call them functions. I feel like they probably are called methods in C-sharp, but I just... I guess when I uh, talked about code, it was at my last job, mostly. And we used uh, Node and JavaScript. Pretty Node is JavaScript, basically, but... <clears throat> okay. Usually in object oriented programming, the term method is used. Good to know. I've always said functions, and my teacher got mad and said they're called methods in C sharp. Okay. I mean, that makes, I guess that makes sense. <clears throat> Uh, Java and C Sharp were both they were both referenced as methods. But uh something like JavaScript, where it's just doing a quick thing, real time, front end. That would be more of a function than a whole method. Um okay, so I guess we can test this and see how many different parts of it are broken. <laughs> Right off the bat, we have some <coughs> errors coming up. Start coroutine watch balls. I don't think that takes any things. Watch. Okay, it does take arguments. <laughs> uh, watch balls. So this is also 106. Where do we have watch balls? Watch balls. Oh, okay. It takes a bool. Is Paulino. Is this referenced? Thrown. Okay. We'll just go to throne. Watch balls is Polino. And that should be what we need. That'll pass the variable of whether or not you're throwing the polino. <clears throat> An object type convertible to bool is required for the return statement. Ah, okay. Eval court. We actually want this to just be a void. We can also find references to it. Okay. Yeah, we never ask for a returned thing. So we're basically going to be able to play this to the end of one round. Or we should be able to, once the errors get worked out. Do I not save? Eval code. Turn key more must not be followed by an expression. I 
there are no balls in play. Eh. That should be fine. Oh, sorry, FX. Sometimes I get super focused. I've always said functions and oh, front end sounds fancy. <laughs> um, I mean, are you just fucking with me, or do you know the difference between front end and back end development? If you're a freshman, it's totally understandable <clears throat> that you have not heard the difference. I think in um, like computer science freshman courses, uh, they usually just teach you object-oriented programming to, because it's, it's probably easier to grasp the entire concept. Um, but front end, front end and back end usually refers to, well, it usually refers to some sort of like web development. Uh, in general, like a front end developer will be writing the JavaScript that actually runs on the web page on the person's computer. So when you go to a website, you're literally downloading a file from a server. So uh, Google headquarters, their server is literally just a really powerful computer connected to the internet. And you are, you go to a certain address and it downloads some set of files that uh, your computer, your browser will read to you. And those are some HTML, some CSS, there's some JavaScript in it, and all of the different languages will do different things. Um, so a front-end developer will do a lot of HTML, CSS, and then they'll write the front-end JavaScript that uh, makes things animated or interactable. Um, and then a back-end developer would be writing code that kind of um, will track when somebody tries to visit the website. It'll it'll keep track, put it in a database, what their IP address was, uh, when they visited. Maybe it'll keep just keep track of stuff like that. Um, sometimes it will take the request of when you visit the website and be like, okay, somebody visited this website. I'm going to find the file that they want according to what URL they're going to and send it back. So that that's all of the code that's actually sending the files out. And there's a lot more to backend, because um, backend can mean a lot of things, but in general, front-end people make make uh, the websites and the front faces of programs look nice and pretty, and the backend uh, developers basically write a lot of the, the meaty parts that uh, kind of... Uh, a lot more logic-based processing. Backend is like innards and front end is what the users interact with. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good way to say it. Terribly sorry, but I had that one life or death phone call, friends, but I'm back. Life or death phone call. I can see that it was life, otherwise you would not be here. <laughs> I'm trying to Trying to maintain both a coding mindset and <laughs> talking to people, and sometimes that translates to bad jokes. Where are your friends? That's the whole point. I don't have any. Now, I was going to print out a picture of me and a picture of Daryl, but I never got around to it yet. Okay, so... I'm going uh, back to Andrew's apartment. You're going back to Andrew's apartment? Yeah. Alright. It's done. There's no errors. We can try it. There's going to be a million errors here. For instance, I didn't even check if, uh, yeah. So there's no opponent balls for one. Oh shit, 10 bits! Do you want to see this first, Courtney? See if it... See if it works. See what... What'd you do? Bocce ball. I 
think uh, we'll probably end up failing, but we'll see. Games we played just donated 10 bits. And whatever he said, I missed. Just had to get that ad. Nice. <laughs> Watching an ad instead of me so that you can give me bits from the ad. <laughs> so generous. <laughs> can I play it? Uh. Oops. Missing component. <laughs> Oops. I don't know if it, that'll break it. We can try it. Uh, okay. Let me see if it even works, and then if it does, you can try it. Shit. Oh no! You got unplugged! No, the controllers are blue. Why are they blue? Okay. Yeah. Does it still work, or do I have to? Okay. Yeah, I'm back in the world. Okay. The Paulino is white right now. Everything so far is working. Still can't oh touch these. Oh sorry. <laughs> um. So when the ball stops rolling completely. I should be able to touch these again. And... Yeah. Null reference exception. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Watching VR from the outside is hilarious. <laughs> It's way more hilarious when I accidentally punch my monitors and knock them off. Okay, so there's something I haven't set, apparently. Polino CIP. Okay. So I have that set to public. That's why I didn't set it. Alright. You'll hear the balls clacking soon. Just a moment away. Okay. Polino CIP. So there we go. So now we can see if it'll work. Still no mesh attached to cube. We can figure out how to do the bounds thing later, but. Oh, that's probably gonna give us an error actually now that I think about it. Okay, that ball. Teleport things are really annoying. Remember that stuff, I think. Okay, so the ball stopped moving. Watch balls is happening. There's ball. Oh. Rollable. Um, ignore hovering. Interesting. Oh, watch balls. Throw marker. Setup marker. Next ball. Oh, so it did work. It just took a long time. Oh, what? It definitely. Oh, okay. No, I can't touch that either. That's one thing I have to remember to do. Okay, so it's not going to work right now, but... Um, real quick, if you just want to see a demo of the cool parts of the bocce ball... FX, do you have a... do you have a Vive? Duplicate these. Move them over here. And... These are just temporary. Damn it, they rolled away. Did you hear the clacking? Oh, I hear it. 
I literally recorded it yesterday with those. Do you have to pause? Oh my god. Are those from home? No, I bought them in California. And somehow decided that that was one of the things I was going to carry take across the country. A $15 bocce ball set. And a grocery bag. Alright, you're heading back to Andrews. Okay. I'll be around tomorrow if you want to get lunch or something. I am for two more. Ah, alright. I'll see you around. And then you can try the bocce ball game when we get it finished. Alright, alright. See ya. Okay, so one thing that's not working is um, <clears throat> there's one part in the script that checks if the balls are out of bounds after everything's stopped. And I think that's giving us a problem. I think that's giving us a problem because. Um, we're trying to check based on a mesh that doesn't exist. This better work with Oculus. I actually looked up the um, looked up some of the Oculus docu documentation. Um, <clears throat> I haven't taken time to evaluate how hard it would be to check if it works for everything, but uh, the general. The general like camera headset thing should be pretty easy, right? You just swap it out depending on what they're using. Um, the hard part would be the controller specific code, which I don't. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I use a lot of Steam. I use a lot of Valve's um, scripts and build off of them when I have to get raw controller input. So, I'm not sure. I will try. I know that's important. But, <clears throat> maybe once the game goes platinum, I'll just hire, hire a team to port it. <laughs> um, okay, so... Let's check that bounds thing. Okay, so this is an actual bounds. When it wakes, we want Bocce bounds to equal this. Um, <clears throat> 101 begging strips. Let's see. How do other people do this? C sharp, uh, Unity grab. Bounds from Q. Bounds finding box. Nice, okay. Get bounds is a function. Uh. Okay, 
so we can just it looks like you can Okay, you can kind of do this in the same way that you declare a vector 3 by giving it a center, which is a vector 3. <clears throat> uh, vector 3 center and vector 3 size. Okay, so the x, y, and z coordinates. So if we want... Um, we can still use the cube just, you know, for visualization, that's pretty important. And then get the transform. Okay, I can come back to chat. I'm sorry, guys. Time to gamble my life away. <laughs> Couch stoner, here comes my boner. Man, you guys are uh, really, really uh, chucking it into stoner VR right now. I'll have to reset so we can see. It's definitely gaining some headway. Keep in mind that's out of ten thousand points. So if you can if you can see a visible lead, then it's in the lead by quite a bit. <clears throat> okay, so we want the center point, which is the position. And then we want to have a new vector 3, which is this. Ah, actually, we don't need a new vector 3, we just need the scale because it's literally a cube that I've scaled. It's not <clears throat> a local scale. Nice, that should work as far as I know from what I just read. We can create, we can manually create a bounds object <clears throat> and use it the same way that we wanted to use it before. That saves some time and effort. Now let's make sure that that... Okay, cool. No error message on this startup. Oh, I forgot that I was... Still randomizing if it's the player's turn or not. Did I see vector 4? How have I never saw that and how is there a fourth vector? <laughs> it just means, um, so vector 4 just means that there's an extra slot. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily refer to 3D space, but it can in terms of a quatern quaternion. Um, quaternions are just vector 4s where the first three values are um, are uh, the vector pointed from voided, pointed in a unit circle. So it's always gonna have a magnitude of one, I believe, and then the fourth value is just a rotation around that vector. So that you can never encounter gimbal lock. So, you know, it's not used in the same way as a 3D vector is used in 3D space. <clears throat> Just extra values put into the same variable. Okay, let's uh, let's see if the Paulino stops rolling and we get the values we want now that all of our variables are here. Uh, was there a reason that the Paulino went through the ground? Oh, maybe it, maybe it came back. Nope, it didn't. It just turned off for some reason. I'm not sure why. Okay. Oops. That's the window. <laughs> okay. 
And I cannot touch those. Oh, but I can touch these. I don't think that's what it's supposed to be. Oh, wait, that, that was the noise. So we sh we're supposed to hear that next ball noise at the right point. I don't know why we uh, why the watch balls takes so long now. It should be a pretty instantaneous thing. Or no, actually, watch balls comes up as soon as you throw it, right? <coughs> Watch balls will come up, and then if it is the Paulino you're throwing, you shouldn't watch for watch balls. Ah, uh, okay. It's because it only checks every 0.5 seconds. Um, there's nothing, not a lot really going on at this point when you're just waiting for the balls, so let's change that to point 0.2. Make it a little more than twice as often for it to check, and then also add a little check in here if it is Paulino. If it, if not, is Paulino. And do this. Just so that we're not necessarily unnecessarily going through this whole loop. Um, also, one important thing that we need to do is player's turn should not be random. At this point in testing, it should be true. It should always start with the player's turn. Gambling away. Alright. I'll be right back and then we'll continue testing until it works. Alright, alright, I just thought of something. We should add a little ticking noise in when it's waiting for the balls to stop rolling, and then when it moves on to the next part of code, ticking stops and, you know, either a buzzer or a ding occurs. That way we'll be able to more audibly tell what part of the code it's at, and also we'll probably want something like that in the final product. Maybe not auto audio, but maybe something. <laughs> oh my god. Soup Monster back salad fingers VR for three ninety-five. Let's uh let's reassess the the race and see which one Oh, back to neck and neck. It might even be salad fingers, I'm not sure. You would have to go to the Revlobot page.
Soup and salad always go together. It's true. I think. Games is saving up. No more gambling. No more gambling until we migrate to the Agobato. And there's actually more than rolling one die. <laughs> so, I have successfully gambled all of my points twice now, and <laughs> one double. So, as you can see, I'm at 9,500. So, I can single handedly vote for almost all of. Oh, Soup Monster with the 135 bits. Thanks for the donation. I mean, thanks for the cheer. Okay. So, players turn, players turn. Um. Let's go back to this log and... Okay. So this is probably the problem. It was not the player's turn. Um, so that would be a definite reason why you wouldn't be able to pick up the balls after the, the one has stopped. <coughs> Donation, cheer, same difference. I mean, essentially, yeah, it's the same thing. Let's let us delete these fake balls. We'll go again now. We've hard coded that the player gets to start first. For now, while well, we test. <laughs> Yeah, we should add that just so that I know. You should hear some audio at the end of Watch Balls, though. And we should also make it so that it doesn't actually have to stop. It should just be below some threshold. Because actually waiting for them to stop takes too long. Nice, and the balls are grabbable again. All four of them, so when we grab one, the other ones are not grabbable. When we throw this one, it should be watch balls again. And then we should hear another ding. And then we should not be able to grab our It's not still rolling, is it? Ah, uh, an error. Well, we got we got pretty far. It's a process. Object not set to a reference. Okay. Well, that's fine. About to check and play nineteen. Is stopped. Um rigid body? The Bocce Master calls this on what object? Object reference not set to an instance of an object. Master League in StarCraft, Bocce looking good. Thank you for the 
compliment Master League in StarCraft. Okay, so... Up until now, it seems like this is working fine. Null reference exception. So it seems like the bocce check-in play was actually set. So this was a null reference. For the rigid body. I believe all of these have rigid bodies. Share 69 points. <laughs> Games, gotta hit the bed, nighty night. May as well leave the flip page open if you know what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, games, thanks for hanging out, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again pretty soon, I'm sure. And hopefully we'll have this whole bocce ball game working by then. You literally type cheer 1, or cheer 5, I think, to actually cheer. Like, you can actually type out the words and it will do things. Um, but, let's see. <laughs> let's try to figure out what's going on here. This should just return a bool. I don't know why the rigid body would not be set unless there was a not a rigid body on it or something. Well, we can check. Chair 100 points. Yeah! You bet it is. I always forget. Start and awake are... I think I actually want awake here. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it was called on something that was not there. Here we can say if rb equals null, we can debug log this just to figure out why that would be null. I think changing it to awake might solve our problem, though. Cutie movie maker, are you pounding your hands? I'm not pounding my hands. Is there something up with my mic? <coughs> or was I pounding my hands? I probably was, who knows. Um, no rigid um, found. Okay, so let's start the game again, make sure it doesn't say that anywhere, and then try throwing the balls again. Actually, before we do that, let's write in right now. The velocity is less than that. That's too small. We don't care if the balls are all actually stopped, we just care if they're all relatively stopped. So, 0 0.01 square magnitude should be good. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay. That time it went through the ground. What? 
Did it just go straight through the ground? Like, where is it? Yeah, it's just falling, falling, falling. That's pretty weird, right? It had a collider. It's a solid object. Tier 100 without the quotes. <laughs> you guys are going to hack it eventually. Keep working on it. I know you got it. I know you guys got this. Okay, so let's look at if there's anything that changes the sphere collider when we grab it. Still, still a hard object. Still bounces on the ground. What is going on? Why does it sometimes do that? <clears throat> One thing we could do to improve this is, uh, since this plane is a mesh collider, and sometimes there are problems with them, we could make it convex, but, oh man, it's huge! Then we want to scale that down, and then, uh, Negative 0.5, probably do that. That should work better. Um, probably a smart idea anyway for a plane. It's easier on the physics if it's convex. I just didn't think... Uh, ah. Well, that's pretty annoying. It's the, uh, yeah, it's the actual collider. How about instead of a mesh collider, we have a cube collider, so we can decide where to put it. Okay, so it also has um, physics material, so we need to remember to apply that. Cheer, cheer, cheer one! The doggo, how's it going? Artifacts, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Still working on this ball game? Aren't you tired of working on it and just ready to play with some balls? I get to play with balls every day of my life. So, I wish I could share that joy with the world. So that's what I'm doing. Box Collider. We want to give this a 1, and then we want to lower it by 0.5, and that should actually be what we want. Bring this court material in here, and then I think we can just get rid of this. And that should be a lot better than what we had before, but still, I don't know why the ball would fly directly through a box. But, uh... Yeah, I've been I've been on and off this game. This the reason that I'm always on this is because I've not been a hundred percent focused over the last couple weeks. But we've done a lot of progress today. It's a uh, it's going pretty quickly now. Okay. Stop, and then you'll hear a ding. Taking a little too long. Yeah, that's way too long. See, we were waiting for it to actually stop, and for some reason, 
it just keeps moving very, very slowly, slower and slower. But now we should be able to touch these. Okay, we can touch them. So let's give it a let's give it a go. And make sure that this works again. Now that should not give us any problems. And we should hear another ding when that stops. <laughs> wow, yeah. Okay, it worked. So, now it should not be our turn. Yeah, it's not our turn. Um, so now it's the opponent's turn. And we haven't programmed how the opponent is going to throw the ball. <laughs> but... Ideally, the rest of the the rest of the game should work. <laughs> um, cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> so, do we want to just uh, auto have the balls be auto thrown when it's the uh, other player's turn. For now, we should do that. Just have him launch, just like fake launch them. How's your? How are your projects artifacts? I know you said you couldn't really work on them very much lately, but Um, okay, so let's find the piece of code. Let's find the part in Bocce Master where we come back. We say watch balls. We go to next ball after the eval court. Okay, so eval court apparently works because it determines that. It is not the player's turn, based on the player's ball being the closest ball and neither side being out of balls. So <clears throat> so then when we go to next ball, that is where we say, okay, right. The player has his stuff here, but if it's not the player's turn, we don't really have anything. Uh, So what we really need is Spooky's still MIA, so I've been doing a bit of a bit of mine. Got the missile launch to launch properly out of the launcher, which took a full goddamn day for some reason. But I learned a lot from it. <clears throat> Don't downplay those days because that's uh, those are like the most important days, the ones where it doesn't feel like you made much process progress, but you put a lot of time and effort into it and got something done. As long as you learned something from it. <clears throat> That's probably more valuable than just speed running through stuff that you already know how to do. <coughs> okay, so I guess we haven't really thought through how this the other player will throw this stuff. Okay, so Bachi let go. So we want to say the other guy will throw the ball. On detach from hand. Thrown. 
So we'll call one ball grabbed with one of the random balls that we'll call thrown. So one ball grabbed and then thrown. Essentially, I was trying to get the rocket to animate into a loading position and sitting there until it fired. It came down to me having to animate an empty object and parenting the instantiated rocket to that. If I did it any other way, the rocket would revert to its origin when I cleared the parent. Huh. Interesting. Oh, a video of the final product is on Discord? Nice. Your Discord or mine? <laughs> I think I joined, yeah, joined your Discord. Nice. <clears throat> cool. We'll, we'll watch this real quick on the on stream. I want to see it. Uh. Nice. Are these like four rocket launchers lined up? <laughs> I love how the debug log says trying to fire every time. As if you had been struggling with it for a long time and it wasn't actually firing, but you were saying it's trying to fire. Only did it with one rocket so I could figure it out without animating four rockets every time. Nice, nice. Pretty good. <laughs> hey, but it works. That's all that matters. Um, <clears throat> so for my last game, I wrote the code for the third person camera for the character. And I think I spent two, two full weeks, like really hard to get that camera to work perfectly because I would, I would get it working, but then I would not like how it works. And I would go back to it and be like, okay, it'll, I can figure it out to, to make it even better. And I would like go to sleep at night and I wouldn't be able to sleep because I would be thinking of the different ways that I can um, change, change how it works. And I ended up getting a pretty badass setup, but then realizing that, you know, if I was a real, real developer just trying to get a game out, I could have bought a third person camera asset on the asset store for ten dollars, <throat> and it would have just been done. So you know, two weeks of time is a long time, but I learned a lot about uh, rotations in Unity, which is extremely important. I think that's where people usually back away and say, "I'm not touching this. I guess we just can't make this game now because it requires us to rotate things." Man, I don't have my camera working how I want yet to yet and have it set up in a real poorly optimized way. I'm going to have to completely redo it at some point. Oh man, there's so many things in my games where I'm like, I'm going to have to completely redo this at some point. It happens pretty often. Placeholders are important too though. Okay, so... You like it. So we want to say thrown and one ball grabbed. In next ball, not going to lie, I thought about buying a camera. 
because I spent a day working on the camera, and that's not how I want it, but I should be able to fix it. Nice. <laughs> I cannot read what you said, Turbo. Your sound was off, but welcome to the channel. Welcome to the stream. Your cat typed the rest of your sentence, that's why it's so weird. Ah, that makes sense. One ball grabbed and thrown. Okay, and I think both of these require the thrown. <laughs> what kind of cat do you have, Turbo? Okay, Paulino. One ball grabbed. We're gonna actually have the ball there, and then the other one is going to be Paulino. So in next ball, it's never going to be the Polino. <coughs> so we're going to say false. And one ball grabbed is going, we're going to have to deter determine which ball it is. Um, Your parents' dog dog was racist. Oh, a fat black racist cat. Okay. So how is your bot coming along? Did any jack dragons die yet? Yes, we got the we got the battles working. We got the monsters working, and we got the loot drops working. Um, we got the healing working, and we got uh, what else was there? Some other stuff maybe. Uh, but I don't want to have it running if I'm not working on it until it's done. Oh, and we got uh, images working. So when uh, every half hour to 45 minutes, a, an event will happen. And if it's like a shopkeeper coming by the chat, there will be a little shopkeeper in the corner of the chat. Or if there's an actual like monster, it'll show up in the bottom of the chat. Um, I wanted it to be like a gif, like, you know, for instance, if it's a dragon, like, have it, like, fluttering in the corner, but, uh, then I'll have to find gifs of all of the different creatures that we have, and that seems kind of hard because they're, I don't want to just, like, steal people's art, <laughs> but also I'm not going to pay somebody to make me gifs of creatures for this chat, so I'm currently deciding what to do. But yeah, it's working really well lately. Last time I tried it was over the weekend. She was tormented by my grandparents' dog when she was young, so she grew up hating all black dogs. We used to run at them barking, even though she was 12 pounds and there would be upwards of 60 pounds. <laughs> That's terrifying. A secret boss that's called Turbo. I'll keep it on the back burner. <laughs> oh my god, Turbo. Um, so one idea I had was that uh, the actual monsters that we have are actually bosses, and there's like they're much harder to kill and much larger, and they would be at the end of the stream. Like, right before I end the stream, I would... Um, I would call a boss. <coughs> but until then, it would just be smaller, like, minions of different types. Because that would make it more exciting, you know? If, like, if you knew that you had just during this stream to stock up on potions and, uh, I don't know, prepare, do something to prepare, that would be pretty cool. 
Like, the longer you've been watching that day, the more mana you have, maybe? Stuff like that would be pretty sweet. But, those are all just ideas. It's kind of just fun writing the bot, more than anything. The secret boss turbo only gets triggered to spawn when turbo dies every 100 times. <laughs> <coughs> That would be pretty funny. Super turbo. Okay, so you want to say opponent balls. Opponent. No completions found. But that should be good. I guess it's because I was using this array outside of its normal place. Okay, so that will give us a different ball for each one of these. Or instead of the minus one, we could just do this. And then it'll give us each one down the line. Uh, but we need to remember to actually throw it before. So we're going to have to set up a couple things. Um, a launching point of where the guy's fake hand is until we actually make the animation of him throwing it. <coughs> uh, public, I guess, game object. Opponent. Uh, opponent hand. We'll just call it opponent hand. And then we will. Yeah, we'll figure this out as we go. It can't be too hard. It's going to be cool to see the fake AI play against you. That is literally the next part of this. Okay, so right here. Um, <clears throat> so if we grabbed... So right here we want to make sure that it's thrown. Around. Okay, so thrown here, and then watch balls. Okay, so that's great. I will wait 0.2 seconds before it even checks, so that'll give it plenty of time. Um, <clears throat> its position is opponent's hand, hands transform dot position. And how do we want to tell it to launch? It's a lot. We're just going to set its velocity essentially. So we're going to have to get its rigid body. Again, a very rare event. So we're just going to use get component rigid body. Unless it's in Pachi checking play. 
It is. Do we want to make it public? I think we just want to make it public. Uh, nah. Let's not make it public. A rigid body should not be messed with publicly. You're gonna go to bed. Be right back. <laughs> you can't time myself out. Okay. You can't ban yourself. Ah. Uh, it's too bad. I know how people love to ban themselves. Let's just make it public. Let's just do it. NBD. NBD. RB dot velocity, and then we we've got to point it. Um, Well, it's got to be in the forward z direction for one, so vector three dot forward. Um, but we want to rotate it around. We want it to be pointing up a little bit. Or do we just want it to be 45 degrees? So vector 3 forward plus vector 3 dot up. But then still, it would be... <laughs> I'm Turbo, the greatest park mod in existence, but today I found my fatal flaw. I can't ban myself. I'll end my existence right where I sit. I'm sorry, world. You have so much to live for, Turbo. Okay. So, vector 3 forward, vector 3 up. I don't think that's how we want to do it. I think we want to... Point, point it, um, let's say, opponent hand dot transform dot or opponent hand dot look at no there we go close that up first it's another thing okay transform look at <clears throat> so this will rotate it to look at the Paulino. Uh, unknown resolver. Vector 3, world position. Okay, it's a vector 3. That should be fine. We'll look at that, and then we want to we want to get a normalized vector of that. Uh, 
and then also give it some upward. Yeah, that's all we'll do. <coughs> Yo, Ago, keep up the good work, bud, and I'll see you tomorrow. <coughs> POB. So, talk to you then. Alright, see you, Turbo. Thanks for stopping by, dude. All other people in here, smash the follow button. <clears throat> it's true, you should. Okay, so we're thinking about how we want to do this. Opponent ball's velocity is going to be. So we're going to say opponent and dot transform dot forward because it's now looking at the ball. Um, plus, <coughs> oh, dot forward dot. Yeah, that, that's actually perfect. Um, plus vector three dot up. Hmm. Do we want to project forward off of the. I think we want a vector three project for this. Project on plane, and then we can just say. So that will give us a good setup. Okay, and then and then with that we just need to multiply it by some variable. Um, um, he's going to aim for the Paulino. Paulino dot <coughs> transform dot Position dot Z. Um, and we're going to use that along with a value. Uh, what, is it called? what is it called? Okay. I'll just call it this. And this is going to be a float. We can watch him throw the ball and decide if it's uh, too fast. Okay, 
so let's check if there's anything else that we have to do for this. Our next ball, usually, <coughs> usually the throne part, does everything until the watch balls section. And then from there, it decides who goes next. So that'll be great if the player sucks and he just keeps throwing balls. Um, because then we get to test that extra. So we basically have to make the AI kind of good for this, so that the other player doesn't just throw all of his balls at once. Okay. Float to int. Two sixteen. Okay. Um, opponent ball count should not be a float. They should both be ints. No reason to be floats. Okay. And the balls should also stop a lot easier. So let's check it out. Let's check it out, guys. to use that chunk of code I just wrote, I have to shift everything, meaning all of the game objects and the whole thing here, over by some amount. Close enough. That's the point where the other guy should throw his thing. The variable opponent hand. Oh, right. I didn't even do that. <coughs> okay. All right. Let's make that right now.
This is set at negative one point one. Okay. Let's see how this works. Also, I think the <clears throat> I think one of the problems that we're having with why it's taking so long the ball for the ball to roll is that we're checking the velocity square magnitude, but we're also checking the angular velocity. And there's no reason to check the angular velocity, I don't think. So I'm gonna say let's comment out this line. After we copy it. And just like remove that chunk for now and see if we like that better. Because <clears throat> the angular velocity can have a lot of different values. Uh, okay. That needs to be saved, and then we need to apply the opponent hand to the Bachi Master. <clears throat> opponent hand, right down here. Okay. Let's check it. So we definitely want to increase that a little bit. What do we? Oh, that's pretty sweet. Oh, but he needs a little more power. <laughs> that's great. He just threw all his balls, so now it's my turn. It should go back to my turn. Ooh, that part didn't work. Okay, so it looks like the possibly the counter of how many balls he has left is off, maybe? That's great. <clears throat> so he's really bad at bocce balls, so he just basically threw all of his balls. <clears throat> but that worked great. So the that value that I have up here, I just have to increase it a little bit because it looked like he was throwing it a little short. <clears throat> um, and we can improve his uh, AI throwing later to make it, you know, have some amount of range instead of making him throw it in the exact correct direction. <clears throat> but that's pretty good. I like that. Um, we might have to adjust it still. Like depending on where the ball is, maybe we'll have to add different variables in. But that works great. Let's uh, check. Let's look down in uh, <clears throat> eval court and see what happened to return the wrong thing. If opponent ball count is less than one. Oh, oh no! So that should re that should be true. So the opponent ball count must not have been less than one. <clears throat> but interestingly enough, he threw all four balls, meaning that the fourth one should have been ball zero. So, watch balls happens. It's down here. Eval court is called. <coughs> We're in eval court. Point ball count 
is less than one. Next ball. Should have gotten here. Well, we can try again and see. Debug log. Well, I'm heading out, man. I'm about to pass out. Super tired. I'll catch you next time. All right. Thanks, artifacts. Thanks for hanging out and checking out the stream. The bocce ball is getting is working pretty well. Next time you stop in, it'll probably be good. So, well, you know what? There's um, players turn public. You. That'd be an easy debug thing. I'll just put it there just for now. And then, um, we can also debug log both of these. Let's see, let's see. That will at least tell us. Maybe this is why. Ah, there we go. I think that's why. It's because I wasn't accessing the game object before I was trying to destroy something. <coughs> so... I think it got to the right point, it just couldn't find the proper thing to destroy. Um, or no, that's not true. Because it was working fine before. Well, we'll, we'll see which what's going on when we replay it real quick. I'll be right back. I'm to 
A couple of things are going weird though. Alright. Start it up. Has trouble returning to my turn. Player's turn true. Hmm. Weird. It knows that it's my turn. And it didn't successfully remove the. Oh, I see the problem. Oh. It's been creating more ignore hoverings than it is supposed to. Oh, because the I see. Because the other player is throwing the balls and it's calling the script to make mine not. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. We're gonna have to. Add in a bool there. Bang it there, welcome to the stream. Welcome back, dude, how have you been? Been missing out on your stream, huh? I was doing some streaming myself, doing some modeling stuff. I saw you were on, I was actually, I should have told you, I was actually going to raid you whenever I was done. But I also don't think I'm gonna be done super soon because this bocce ball stuff is going pretty well. I think I just figured out one of the last problems. Okay, so ignore hovering. Nothing about it here, right? Oh, add component. Okay, that's fine. Let's turn that off. One ball grabbed. Okay. So we need to we need to only do this. Mm -hmm. 
Looks like you're a more dedicated streamer. <laughs> I've never played bocce ball, you haven't, FX? It's pretty fun. It's like, it's not very intense. It's a game where you can just drink some beers and throw some balls and not break a sweat. Got a small container modeled and set up in Unity. Nice. You call it a night because I have work in the morning? Yeah. Work in the morning is something I'm glad I don't have right now. Although when I found like a project that I was really into, that would actually really fuck up my work day because I, I would like work super late anyway, and I would be up until like 3 a.m. working on a project after work, and then the next day I would go in and feel like complete shit the whole day. Just because I had to get up relatively early for that job, but you know. It always feels way shittier when you have to be tired around people rather than just tired on your own. Okay, so... <coughs> uh, this is an array? Yeah. So we want to say system.array dot index of all or uh, Layer balls ball. Okay, and if we find this, if this is not equal, not equal to negative one, I always hate how that's worded. So it is found, that means it is found because it can be anywhere in there. Um, then we want to do all of this extra stuff. Great. You've done it and it's no fun. Yeah, for sure. Sounds like a game I would love. If I have to exert myself, that's a deal breaker. Nice. <laughs> I've done that late night model stuff too many times, and while it's really nice to have modeling stuff done, it sucks for work the next day. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <clears throat> uh, at my last job, I was kind of allowed to make my own hours. Like, I could work late some days, and that, you know, it was kind of flex time, but at least they said that. But at the same time, uh, I would constantly get told that people notice when I'm not there, and I'm like, but I was here when nobody else was here, so it shouldn't matter. Alright, that's what I was told. But apparently it wasn't okay in the end. Okay, so let's check this out. We're only going to block all the other balls from being grabbed when the player grabs one. But if it's not the player grabbing it, then... <clears throat> yeah, so that's how it'll go. Okay. It might... Okay, yeah, never mind. We got it. Ooh, that's going to be really close. The AI is not going to beat that. Next ball player's turn true. Okay. We each have three balls left. All of the stuff coming in is correct. Let's look at my balls. <laughs> uh, it still has an ignore hovering on. Still has an ignore hovering on. I'd like to have the full-time game dev streamer life you have, but I know you've got a lot of your own stressful things to deal with. Yeah, for sure. I mean, 
mean, it, it is great overall, and sometimes, like, I forget that when I have, like, mostly just worries about money. Like, I'm trying to time it so that it's, like, going as long as I can until I have to find a job. <laughs> FX. I, I know you want to. I know you do. <laughs> okay, so... There's these ignore hovering scripts added on, and next ball. So this is <laughs> next ball player's turn. So this should happen. I'm not sure where the extra ones are being added, but... Um, <clears throat> That's the only reason I'm here. Accidental ball slip. <laughs> well, I'm sure it'll happen one day. Just keep watching. Keep cheering bits. Keep donating. And it'll happen one day. Yeah, that'll be a really be my big concern, having a stable income. I mean, I do have a decent amount saved up. So for the time being, it's only kind of stressful to think about. Okay, we're going to try to play this without actually... putting the headset on. Oh, and it went inside the bounds. Nice. Ah, oh, shit. Yep. Nah, there's no way we're gonna get this done. Okay. Let's restart it because we don't want the AI trying to throw us at that. creating. Damn, the AI is too good. We have to, we have to fuck him up. <laughs> we have to make him, we have to give him a random value of how hard he throws it and just make that random value more concise based on, um, make the random value smaller based on his skill level or something. I want to have a game release first, see how well it does, and hopefully it works to be able to work doing Twitch, YouTube, and possibly merch stuff. But it's also hard because VR is a small audience. Yeah, that's uh, <coughs> that's definitely true. For the time being. But you could also be the guy. You could also be the guy when VR becomes like a much wider audience. Like, wouldn't it be cool to be one of the first guys that people watch developing VR games? I don't know if that'll be a thing that anybody ever remembers, but if it was, that would be cool. It's possible to get a grant type thing as well. Um, I mean, there, there, are, there are definitely investors that are kind of just like going crazy with VR. You could definitely find somebody that's like, sure, I will, you know, invest in your company for this much of a return, you know. And there are people that are willing to just, like, risk a lot of money based on the fact that it's VR and they think it'll just do well automatically. <coughs> there was a guy in, um, I think it was just like the Unity 3D subreddit, um, looking for game ideas, and 
Um, I think I saw something about how he like proved that he actually did want to support ten games and throw down like I think it was like ten thousand dollars each game. He had like a hundred thousand dollars he wanted to drop on ten games. Um, after deciding like if he thought it was going to be successful. <coughs> One ball grabbed. Ten thousand per game. I would do a hundred thousand on one good game or promising game. All on black, baby. Oh my god, that's the issue. I don't want investors. I'd like a grant, like Unreal gives away grant money to help develop. But I know they have a return from royalty as well. That's true, that's true. Yeah, I mean... That's a hard thing. Uh, whenever we, I was in an office, we would always like buy like a, do like a lottery pool, and I think about 90% of the office was Kind of just like, yeah, we're obviously not going to win. We just want to throw in our one dollar for the this month just to, you know, contribute to the office morale or whatever. Like, we'll just join in for the fun of it. And then there were a couple people that were just like, okay, when we win, what are we going to do with our money? Like, as if we're actually going to win the lottery. And everybody talked about their vacation homes they wanted and where they're going to move and how they're going to instantly quit their job. And I was like. Like, all the time, all I was thinking was, I'll just comfortably make video games for the rest of my life. Or, you know, whatever other hobbies or things I want to pursue pop up. Um, but I would not quit my job immediately. And I would not want to not have a job. Like, even right now, I kind of miss having uh, people that are doing the sim similar things to me that I can constantly ask questions and learn from. Just being in an office environment, being forced to do things that you don't necessarily want to do, pushes you a lot harder. And I would probably be learning a lot more if I was at working at a game company right now instead of working on my own games. I think that's probably always true. One ball grabbed, opponent balls, opponent ball count. Okay. There's turn false. Destroys them fine. Hmm, maybe this, uh, maybe this system array index of is not working how I think it works. So wait, let's, uh, let's rethink through this for one second. I had an idea for a cool OBS plugin. Check this out. What would you say if there was a plugin that would let the viewer control different volume levels from the broadcaster, like voice music game? <clears throat> so it would be like an external plugin that you would download while you're watching a stream? And you would just kind of tune into the stream to get your volume rather than take, getting it from Twitch. That could be pretty cool. I think it would have a pretty niche crowd though, but definitely useful. If the ball is in the player ball.
I would think this is always going to be negative one. So let's let's try that, and see what we get out of it. I mean, <clears throat> not only could viewers use that, but if you could if you could write something like that, um, you could probably sell it to Twitch. Or probably not sell it to Twitch because knowing Twitch, they would just be like, "That's a terrible idea," and then they would implement it themselves. But if there were, you know, if there were volume controls on the Twitch video that separated each channel, that would be amazing. I'm pretty sure most people come into, like, a, uh, a lot of people probably come into a stream and they're like, I really, really wish this guy wasn't playing this techno music or whatever he's listening to. Funny enough, I found out there's an indie game group that uses meetup.com. They meet once a month on Thursday. The exact time I'm in the same building in a different room doing a weekly network and user checkup for a client. Oh no. That sucks. There were a lot of game development meetups in the Bay Area. A lot of different kinds. I used to go to a VR meetup like once a month in downtown San Francisco in 20, the very end of 2014, very beginning of 2015, and that was pretty sweet. But in Cleveland, there actually is a game developer group. I've never met with them, though. I probably should have, but they have so such like seldom meetings that it's hard to remember to go to it. Kind of what I was thinking. Like if you would control volume with your Twitch screen with a plugin that the broadcaster would set up. Yeah, that's definitely doable. Um, I mean, it would be something that like either the broadcaster enables and sends separate channels, or he doesn't, and you can't control it. But like, you know, obviously the partners of Twitch would be using whatever settings they could to. <clears throat> change the to send extra data and make their stream better. Yeah, it would take Twitch to play along. Twitch uh, is surprisingly happy to play along with whatever they can. Uh, but Twitch loves integrating stuff. Like you should see how many guides they have on getting your game Twitch interactive. There's a whole department at Twitch just um, for engineers to help Twitch developers develop things like that. It's working. Um, now I can read the AI. What? I didn't beat that. Well, it's still rolling. That's part of the problem. Hmm. All right. I'll trust it for now, but we're gonna do heavier testing. <laughs> okay.
Eval round, yes! The code worked and we finished the round. And. Technically, the ball was running, was moving too slowly before it hit the back wall. But it should have hit the back wall and been out of bounds. I can try that also, throwing the Polino against the wall, throwing the Polino close to the wall, and seeing if the opponent will <clears throat> go out of bounds. Um, but the next thing to write is eval round, and that will show how many points they have. <laughs> Bang it there. You can, you can always uh, talk to people on the meetup.com groups and suggest other times. And a lot of times there will be other people that will answer, answer and be like, yeah, that time actually doesn't work for me either. I would totally do a different day or a different time. Especially 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on a Thursday is, like, that's usually when people are at work. So there's got to be a chance that they'll do it on a like, weekend, do something else on a weekend. Um, oh yeah, FX. Let me let me look it up. I forget what it's called, but on Twitch's website, Twitch's developer help. They're like developer success. The de yeah, the Twitch developer success team is a team devoted specifically towards helping other developers write like Twitch centric apps and stuff. <laughs> let me see if I can find a link to their thing. Um, here's a blog post talking about it, but I actually, uh, at uh, PAX Dev in Seattle, I watched uh, two different demonstrations about Twitch and <coughs> their dev success team uh, by the guy who was leading it. And he had one really cool demo and real, one really shitty demo that I thought was really subpar. I was like, wow, this is not cool. It looks really bad. Like, you need a front end guy to, like, do some extra to make it look better because it looks like Windows 95 graphics. <clears throat> Yeah, definitely check that out. But, okay, so eval round was called. Let's do a couple other tests before we finish and move on to that part. Uh, an eval round will just uh, score the round when all the balls are resting and then throw points up somewhere. So we can just throw points up on the canvas. It's already there for now. And then decide we'll probably want an actual scoreboard real-life bocce scoreboard. So let's do two things. We should throw the Paulino against the against the uh, back wall. We should go all the way back and hit the back wall. Ah, I don't think I will actually. I didn't throw it hard enough. <laughs> Still didn't throw it far enough. Okay. So one thing about the Polino is I don't think it's big enough. I think it honestly needs to be a little bigger. Um, instead of point three, point zero three five, point zero four, maybe. Just try that. Just slightly, slightly bigger. But also the rigid body needs to have slightly less drag. 
I'm thinking point three instead of. Point three five. Uh, let's go in small amounts because these are small numbers already. <coughs> I'm going to check it out. It's something probably outside of the scope of my knowledge skills, but maybe it would be cool to dink around with. For sure. Let me know if you... Let me know if you, uh... Actually make any progress on it, because that would be really cool. One OBS plugin I wish they had was... Um... A plugin where you can capture the screen, but zoom in slightly on the mouse. <laughs> or the cursor. So if you're doing writing code, for instance, um, a lot of people don't have a large enough screen or like don't have a clear enough screen. I don't know. Uh, so when they're working on code on Twitch, if it's not super HD and a super large screen, you can't really read it. Which I guess a lot of people don't care to read the code, but I don't know. I'm sure plenty of people do. Let's try throwing this against the wall one more time. This is a much better size. Slightly different. Damn it. Okay. Nice, no returns. I didn't hear a buzz, but that's fine. Oh. Oh, I went to next ball because we want to. Oh, okay. I see what happened. Since it's the Paulino, when I hit the back wall, its uh, velocity went to zero. Keep me posted. <clears throat> I see what you mean. I have my IDE at 150% so people can read text. Yeah, mine is pretty high too, but sometimes I feel like if I could make it a little smaller, like, maybe not this small, but this gives me a lot more range to see everything. But uh, I feel like it's a little larger than my normal comfort level. So it would be really nice if uh, you were doing that. But also, <coughs> I have other things on my screen. So, this is hard to read. Um, but yeah, if I could do that, then I could just uh, move this window off to another monitor and then uh, capture just this like window, whatever size I want it to be, and just zoom in on that and then have it on like half of my screen. <laughs> and then maybe also with the plugin, if I click away from this uh, window with the code in it, it just doesn't show it. I don't know. There's a lot of cool things you could do that would make <clears throat> programming streams, or I guess people write books on streams sometimes. That they could also benefit from that. Okay, so when the Paulino goes out of bounds, okay, where do we remove the? No, not that. So next ball. 
Okay, so next ball was called from watch balls. So So here we would want to say, if it is the Paulino and it's out of bound at this point, then, so then pass all of this up and remove its uh, ignore hovering. Public pool out of out of play. Okay. So we can check that and And we can I guess we can use this. If is Paulino and the <coughs> Paulino is out of play. Then we want to set this back to false. And destroy, you know, dot get component. Ignore hovering. <clears throat> you can return in an IE numerator, I believe, right? I don't know if I've had a reason to do it before, but and it's synchronous, so that's fine. It's not going to accidentally execute anything else. Or I guess you don't have to do this. Just want to kind of return. And then uh, throw a marker, we have to. Uh, that should be fine, that should fix everything, <clears throat> both of our problems. Let's try throwing it really far again. Uh, 
Oh. Ah. Yield break to end iteration. That's what it is. I've done that before. Watch balls. Yield break. I think is what I wanted. <clears throat> My controller is going to die soon. Nice. So this comes back, I can grab it. Uh, oh yeah. Hey, what? Next ball is still cold. Next ball is still cold. <laughs> Watch balls and then throw marker and then set up marker. Okay. Could be this race condition. Easily could throw marker set up marker. Right. <clears throat> Ovo, what level of math do you think it takes to do the kind of stuff you do? Uh, uh, I have no clue, because sometimes, well, you could do a lot of this uh, with not too much math, but there definitely are some points where I, so there are a couple uh, very, like, important things, mostly when rotating objects and using some of Unity's uh, like physics related things, like getting dot products of vectors and cross products and stuff. Uh, that's like, that's, I think that's stuff that you don't really learn in depth until Calculus 3 maybe. I mean, you kind of learn with 2D vectors in physics, maybe. Maybe maybe in physics 2 or something. I don't know. But it's a decent amount of math. You can get by without any, any of that, though. You can do quite a bit of programming, especially if you're making a 2D game. You can get away with uh, faking it or just... Just uh, doing kind of similar things that aren't exactly what you wanted, but they work. But I feel like sometimes I do, I try to do it the hard way just to prove to myself that I, uh, <laughs> just to like make use of my degree or whatever, I don't know. Plus it's fun to see applications of stuff that you learned. Okay. Here we are. We got it back. That works. And those still are going there. Throw marker. And next ball. I wonder... <laughs> I wonder why it's calling next ball.
Well, I guess we could put some debug logs in there to finish it. Switched my major from computer science to information systems because I blow up math. I guess I suck really, really hard at math. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. I mean, especially if you work at a game company, there are a shit ton of jobs programming or art-wise or whatever that require zero math. If you want to make an entire game yourself that's 3D, you probably want to know some 3D math. Let's see. Let's put in some debug logs in this just to see. This should be getting called. Is Paulino should be true here. Paulino check in play. Should that should also be true. So it should come into here. You don't inspire to ever build an entire game engine from scratch. I think if I land a job coding stuff and actually making money, I'd be happy. Nice. Yeah, you're totally fine then. Maybe yield break is not doing what I think it's doing. That's not what I need. Hmm. Now, it looks like this is correct. Here we can see what happens here. And then try throwing it one more time. <coughs> see what happens.
interestingly enough, that didn't, uh, Uh, maybe this isn't setting it correctly. <sighs> if this is a Polino throw marker. Well, this is definitely being called out of play equals true. Because a uh, throw marker is being called, which is the important part that we noticed. Let's put one more before this and see why it's not entering that statement. <coughs> One of these is going to be false, and then we can look deeper into why. Okay, watch balls. Where is that being called from? It's being called from. So, this. This game object dot compare tag. So let's look at thrown. It could be that uh, thrown. Okay. It's all you know. This is what we also want to track it down a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so we got enough logs there. Ah, both of my controllers are almost good. So 
So out of play is false. Is Polino is true. <clears throat> so that's fine. Out of play is false. Why or sorry? It's a public pool. Hmm. Okay, let's, let's see, why would that not be true? Oh my god. It's because I set it right here. No way. No, I don't. Come on, I need to. <clears throat> I need to figure out. Throw marker is called. Just sets it back up. I guess when it hits the back wall, there's a possibility that <clears throat> it stops for long enough. No, it's 0 0.2 seconds it has to be stopped. What is causing it to not be Go Maka. Guess let's add some debug logs in here too. Mm. Thank you. 
Let's give it one more toss. Read through all the variables. The outputs. Throw marker. Can I not save the new code? It's saved. Rethrowing out of play. <clears throat> it's got the tag. <laughs> Throne is Paulino. Throw marker. But yeah, it doesn't, uh, it's not calling this line that I think it should call. Um. <clears throat> You know, has check and play. It's tagged Paulino. Am I forgetting something? Compare tag, okay. Could it be because I'm not accessing the game object here? Oops. I think that might, that could be it. Okay, so this, as far as I know, this is probably the answer. Pretty weird problems. Um, okay. It's not set to out of play.
Yeah, I'm pretty... I'm kind of lost on why this would, uh... Not be called. Void out of play. That was not either. Okay, let's let's go to this and see what's Yeah, so it can't be Throne, watch balls, throw marker, next ball. How does it get back to the throw marker? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's time to maybe it's time to sleep on this one. Not really sure where else to look. The only thing I can think of is it's not hitting the compare tag. It's just stopping when it hits the wall. Uh, I wonder if the bounds thing is actually not working. Yeah, so first of all, Bocce out of bound is a tag that should be on the back wall of these. Did I not set that up yet or something? I thought I did. I Alright, back wall. Yeah, okay. Oh my god. The back wall is not forward enough. It's gotta be right at that log there. Okay. So, it was just stopping when it hits the back wall, and then moving on, but it was out of bounds, maybe? Because where are the bounds? 
I think this is it. So the bounds were a little, they were basically at the point where the graphics end, but the, uh, the back wall was not pushed forward enough. So the ball was going through here, stopping, and stopping out of bounds, which puts it out of bounds. Um, <clears throat> Which is one thing you have to think of if you throw the Polino. Yeah, if we throw the Polino out of bounds. We'll we'll test that next. But I think this is that was the problem. It's a pretty weird problem. But since I have two colliders kind of overlapping. <clears throat> okay. Oh, yeah. It stopped. It stopped, and also I forgot to turn off this. So I couldn't see it. Opposite of what we want to happen. Throw markers out. So essentially, what we want to see is we want to see it collide with the this back wall thing. Achi O O B. Before it collides with anything else. And when it collides with that, it should. Um, collision collider. The collider we hit, okay. Let's debug log here. We might not be setting current throw correctly, but I think we are. Pachi Lego. Okay. Thrown. Let's look at thrown again. <laughs> uh, let's uh let's just search current ball dot current throw. Ah okay. One ball grabbed. There you go. That's our problem. Here we go, guys. Okay, so we have to figure out where we want to put this if not in one ball grabbed. Then we can take away a lot of these debug logs. Um, <clears throat> probably in throne. When you actually throw it. Flat up here. Up 
y or I guess we could also just add it here. Mm. And that should solve our problem. So if you throw the ball, the ball grab is true. Um, when you grab the ball, you can't set it down, or that counts as your throw. So as soon as we grab it, we have a reference to the ball, so we use that as an opportunity to set, uh, set a variable on the ball to say that it's being thrown until all of the balls stop, then um, all of their values are set to none of them are being thrown. Just so we can keep track of which one is currently the thrown ball. Scored probably two or three points on that one if he was really playing. So you can see he's uh, obviously way too good. And we need to make him a little worse for the, for the entry level AI. Okay, that's great. So now we know that hitting the back wall um, it's out of bounds. We should try throwing one of the other balls out of bounds also. This dude is a bocce master. Did you see that? It was just like the Paulino surrounded by red balls. <laughs> or, wait. Oh, I forgot to... Oh, I forgot to set his balls as green. They're supposed to be set to green at the beginning of the game. I mean, as long as the colors are different, it doesn't really matter. So it goes out of bounds, and it turns red, and it, you can no longer use that ball anymore. Sweet! So I think what we're going to do, instead of doing the bounds thing, is make the ground out here also that same thing. So that if you throw the ball outside of the bounds, it just it's the same effect as hitting this back wall. That works too. Does that work for all out of bounds, like the sides? Um, so the sides are not out of bounds. You can hit the sides. Um, you just can't hit the back wall on your first throw with that ball. And I think... Uh, to be honest... 
I think if you hit another ball before you hit the back wall, then it's not out of bounds. So if we want to, if we want to fix that, that's actually pretty easy. We just say, <clears throat> we just say, we just turn current current throw off if it hits something else, and it's not like basically it's not alive for it. If it hits the bocce walls, or bocce out of bounds, it makes that sound. Uh, bocce. So if it hits the bocce ball or the polino, there we go. Now we can hit other balls before it hits the back wall. Sweet. And then um, in this watch ball section, I think we want to remove a section because it's not going to be needed if we make a ground and out of bounds type thing. Um, and it'll just simplify the whole that whole part of the script. Although it was cool to find out how to um, check if something is in a box. You can set your own bounds, um, like access aligned bounds, so you know it has to be a box that's not rotated. And you can just de declare it and then check if something is in those bounds. And it's pretty useful. Polino, 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 Polino. Um, so yeah, we probably... So I think all we want to do is cut out a, lot, a bunch of this code um, and replace it with a just like if nothing's out of play or you know just basically we just want to replace it with just like a wait one second and then play the ding next turn. Are things written like balls in play constants? Um, balls in play is a list which is similar to an array. Um, but you can change the size of it. So it's basically, uh, I'm assuming you know what arrays are if you're working, if you're doing uh, freshman year programming. So it's like an array, except you can, um, you don't have to define any size. You just can, you can just say add or remove specific items. Um, so that's helpful because every time I throw a ball and it stays in bounds until it stops, I say it's in play. Uh, when so I add that to the uh, list. If there's something that goes out of bounds, or if we end that round or something, then we remove it from the list so that we have an array of only balls in play so that at the end of the round, we can say which one is closest. Or at the end of each throw, you can um, like iterate through that list and see which one is closest right now. That determines whose turn it is to throw. <clears throat> uh, lists are not as efficient or like anything as arrays, but as long as you're not uh, building a giant list and iterating over it every frame, it doesn't make a difference. But yeah, they're they're very handy. Um, there aren't many. If I'm doing something like this, I'm pretty much always going to use a list. If I'm doing something that needs to be super efficient or that I already know the length of, basically if I know the length of it already, um, I'm just going to use an array. But since this constantly needs to change size to make it more readable and um, everything, yeah. 
as you can see, I'm using an array of audio clips up here because I already know I already know you know before I run these code, I know that the bocce sounds is always going to be the same length array. For right now, we only have two sounds. That might be too much. Uh, <coughs> True. That's pretty cool. So it's working. It looks like I have to charge my controllers pretty soon. But I'm really glad it's working. Um, I guess we next we need to to find the evaluating thing, to evaluate who wins after all the balls have been thrown, or and how many points they get before moving to the next round. So that should be pretty cool. Hmm. Okay. Who should we raid? Because I'm done for the night. I think we should go to this Battle Squatch guy that's uh, streaming and say hi to him and see what he's working on. So let's check it out.